What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the NFC North Roundtable. We are back with the usual suspects. We got Basaraki, Dose of Dion. We got one bar and Nick in the house. How you fellas doing today? Good. The Fantastic. Day, baby. Let's mm -hmm. do it, man. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the offseason. We have so much to talk about on today's video. We are going to be talking about the current state of each team's salary cap. But before we get started, we want you to know that this stream is being powered by BetUS, all right? BetUS gives you the opportunity to receive a 125% bonus. The link is in the description of the video, up to $2,500. But the beautiful part about it is, it's not just on your first deposit anymore. It's on your first three deposits. So take advantage of BetUS. We're talking about 24-7 customer service. We're talking about 24-hour fast payouts. BetUS has it all. And it also has the future game props, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see on the screen, they, all, they have all the future props already up. Make sure you go into NFL specials. Right now, it's crazy. One that caught my eye, and I want to ask these guys about it. Will Aaron Rodgers win the 2024-2025 NFL Comeback Player of the Year? Dion, what say you? Yeah, as soon as you said that, I'm immediately like, okay, who was a big injury this last year? He's the biggest one, so I would, I would, yeah, I would think so. I mean, if if the Jets are completely terrible, then maybe not. And look, I won't count that out as a possibility. They could be absolutely terrible, but I would, I would like that bet. Now it's funny you said the biggest um, injury from last year. Well, Nick, do you think Joe Burrow has something to say about that? No, it's more impressive if, if it's Rodgers because, you know, he's older, he's got more of an impact on the game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the fact that it's the Jets, you know, big market, you know, they're going to want, obviously he's got a little bit more leverage there, but I think it's just because of the fact of what he's done longer than Burrow. That's why he'd probably win it over him. Well, one bar, what if Deshaun Watson absolutely balls out? Did he win <laughs> Deshaun it? Deshaun Watson, come on, oh. give me a break, man. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I want Aaron Rodgers to get this thing. I can't think of anything better. Uh, I mean, and the media is going to be pulling for this guy and uh, just his age. Everything is against him. His, his team is horrible. So, uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, I'm, I'm on him. I'm on him. Let's go. Well, well, one more, uh, Basaraki. Yeah. What if Justin Herbert comes back with the vengeance? No, that's, that's not happening. Like, look, come on. You're asking a Packers fan if Aaron Rodgers is going <laughs> to go and come back, right? If, if Joe Flacco can get it this year after playing what? Like a handful mm. of games? Come on. Aaron Rodgers, 40 years old, ruptured Achilles. The dude, like if they made the playoffs, he, he, there was rumors that he could have played in that. So, yeah, I think he's going to come back. I think he's going to have an excellent season. They have a good mm. defense. They have some weapons there. They're going to add some more. I'm still going back Aaron Rodgers fully, especially when he's in the AFC, right? Once he starts... Once he makes that transition from the Jets to the Vikings, then then no. But <laughs> but before that, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with comeback player for Aaron Rodgers. Well, it's definitely very interesting this year, but plus six hundred, you guys make it seem like a steal. If you agree at home, go ahead, sign up for Bet US, take advantage of the bonus for 125% on your first three deposits, and go ahead and look into the Aaron Rodgers winning comeback player of the year remember supporting our sponsors is supporting the channel well ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and dive in to the salary cap situation for each team in the nfc north we already know the lions are the closest to the promised land right behind them the green bay packers then you have the I don't know which one to pick, but I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings and then the Chicago Bears. I want to start out with the Bears. You know, conventional wisdom would say you got a lot of cap, but do you? Yeah, so with, if without the future contracts that we had, we have $70 million right now. Mm. Little, $70 million and some change. So that was after releasing Eddie Jackson and Cody Whitehair, wishing them the best of luck, Bears legends from the 2018 team. Um, they, I mean, $20 million right there, but you're going to pay Jalen Johnson with that money. So, you know, he he's projected to get a three-year, $60 million contract. He was one of the best DBs in the game last year. So they're definitely going to use that money. But even after that, Bears have $50 million. And then if you take away the future contracts, the Bears actually still do have $70 million. So 
before Jalen Johnson, before anything else, Bears have ninety million dollars in cap at the moment. It's it's pretty crazy. It's crazy back to back seasons. We were top three in cap in the NFL entering free agency. Interesting, interesting. What about you guys, One Bar? We know what's going on with Kirk Cousins. Do you have money for him to begin with? Are you going to blow it all on him? What's the salary cap situation? Well, I mean, uh, as far as Vikings land, this is uncharted territory in quite a while. I mean, last year going into the offseason, we were uh, $24 million over the cap. Mm. And we were still we still managed to make some big signings. Uh, did those signings pan out? Not really, but we were still able to spend some money. So the fact that right now we're twenty five million under the cap, we got twenty five million to spend. Um, you got to look at some guys that they're definitely. I mean, Harrison Smith. Uh, unfortunately, I mean we love the guy, but he's going to be Gonzo. We're going to save like eleven million there. There's a lot of other guys that they're going to cut as well. They just haven't done it yet. So when all is said and done, we're probably going to be sitting around 40 to 50 million in cap space. Um, but like you said, we got some big names out there. We got Kirk Cousins. We got Daniel Hunter. Um, and and we got a lot of holes on this roster. So uh, the good thing is we got a lot of money to spend. Rob Brzezinski, VP of player personnel. The dude is a magician, a magician with the cap space. So confidence is high. So the fact that we're actually at this point right now is such a big win for the Vikings because we're not we're not usually under the cap. So uh, it's all going to come down to Kirk Cousins, Daniel Hunter, and uh, where that goes. But they're going to be they're going to be spendy. But um, what about Justin Jefferson? Isn't it time for him to get some money too? It is. And when you put in Justin Jefferson and you put guys like Brian O'Neill, Christian Darisa, uh, there's some there's some big names there too. Which well, I mean, when you look at it. I'm not going to pretend I'm just this cap wizard, but I mean, when you re-sign these guys, you actually give yourself more more cap space right off the bat too, so that re-signing these guys could actually help us this year. And Justin Jefferson is obviously the big talker. You know, they keep saying, you know, things, something's going to get done before free agency to do that, to, to move up, get some space. We'll see. I hope that happens. I would love it uh, because we need all the space we can get. If we re-sign a guy like Justin Jefferson, Let's bring in some big free agents. Let's go. Mm. Well, hey, it looks like it's interesting times for the Bears and the Vikings. They have some flexibility. But what about the Green Bay Packers? You know you got the big dog, the quarterback, looking to get paid too. How is the salary cap situation looking in Green Bay? So a lot of people will like look at this and go, oh, they have no money. And this happens every year. Like I hear this same song and dance every year. Oh, the Packers have no money. They're not going to sign any free agents. But Russ Ball every year does the same thing. He just continues to create more money. And, and, and nowadays it's it's very easy and you're seeing it more and more at a, in every front office, just kicking the can further down the road, restructuring deals, pushing that bonus out, right? Adding void years to contracts. Like when people say the cap is fake, I understand what they mean because you really can move around so much. And when you have teams like the Saints over the cap, like 40, 60 million every single offseason, yet they still get under, right? That kind of explains a little bit. Right now, the Packers are um, over the cap by $5.2 million. But there's a few moves that clear up a lot of that money. Bakhtiari being one of them. And this is a big topic of this offseason so far. His cap hit for 2024 is $40 million. That's not remaining no matter what. He's on the last year of his deal, whether that's a cut, whether that's a trade. You know, there's an injury grievance issues that could happen, but cutting Bakhtiari, which is what I think is going to happen before the new league year start in the middle of March, saves them $20 million. So just one move. Now they have $15 million to spend. You can restructure guys. Kenny Clark, a max restructure could save 11 million. Jair, a max restructure could save 10 million. Devondre Campbell cutting post June 1st designation could save another 10 million. You know, you do all those three things there, right? If you do the two restructures and cutting Devondre Campbell, the Packers have fifty million dollars in cap space, so that that, that mm. just kind of shows you just a few moves and moving money around. You're not you're not getting rid of it; you're just moving it around mainly. Um, and you mentioned Jordan Love, which is which is a big thing. You know, right now his cap hit for 2024 is set to be twelve million dollars. He's going to get an extension before the offseason, right? They can look at his contract in May. Is he going to get that forty five fifty dollar or fifty million dollars annually? Yeah, probably. But that doesn't mean his cap hit this year is going to be that. It's it's not going to go up much. It's at twelve million. I can I could see it maybe going up to like 16, 17, 18, right? Every contract nowadays also backloaded where the, you know those cap hits go up as years go on as the cap gets higher. So that's where the Packers sit. They could still make moves in free agency. 
a lot of people see that first number and they go, oh, they're not, they can't sign any free agents. And I, and I hate that because you could do so much. You could do so much moving around the salary cap and every single NFL team does it. It's just kicking the can down the road. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like there's some flexibility with the three teams that are at the bottom of the division, but the top dog in the division, which I want to apologize to Lions fans. Let me put the top dog no, no, no. where he belongs. Mm -hmm. uh, come on. There, there we go. go. I felt good. There started. we go. I felt great. Show is Dion's excited now, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, For okay, some reason, I, for, I forgot Dion was here like, like, like the Lions in the second half of the Super Bowl. But, um, Ooh. But listen, I'll take the Super Bowl. <laughs> not, not the line, but not the Super Bowl, but the championship round. But anyway, listen, um, Dion, man, you're at the top of the mountain. Usually, teams that get as far as you did, they're usually strapped because they've gone all in. Is that the case for Detroit? Do you have money? Are you looking at some tough situations? What's going on? Yeah, one thing I want to piggyback what Bass was talking about there. I just I've, I've never really looked into this too deep, but I do wonder if there's just like guys in that front office that are looking in the future years saying this is kind of where we think that number is going to hit. Because most years we projected to go up and then you see the back looks like, oh, it makes sense. The cap number is just going to keep rising. But like, who's that dude behind the scenes that's figuring out like, hey, the number is probably going to go to about this number. So now we can start to plan out that outlook. There's got to be someone doing that background work. I just don't know how they figure that out. I don't know. With that being said, though, yeah, we do have cap space. And look, I, you know, things are going to move fast. Things fluctuate fast by the time you're seeing this. Next 20 minutes, something could change because there's always little movements. But the key is this, right? I look at Spotrack. They have us just over $50 million in cap space. Looking at the mm. top 51, that's top 10 in the league. And with the Lions, though, the thing they have to focus on is the flip side and say, all right, well, they don't have a lot of guys under contract. And I know we've talked about this a little bit before. But the, the key to that is it's just looking at what the roster is. I mean, most of the guys under contract are core pieces because of what those draft picks have done. Recently, we just saw Tracy Walker get let go. And what Bass was saying about you could just move this money around, we saw in the first year that Brad Holmes stepped in here, whole new regime stepped in. It was rough. That first year was, was a struggle. And for the Lions, they had to go through, you know, trying to – kind of move on from deals slowly, but like, hey, we're not going to give up on you, especially the young players. We're going to give you a chance, but we really don't have any flexibility here. Like, there's not a lot of movement because of the deals that we ultimately gave out, the huge deals that we gave on the front end. And even when you look at some of the recent contracts that the Lions have given, where you could argue that did not hit, whether mainly because of injury, Romeo Okora, Tracy Walker, you look at some of these deals, Charles Harris, and for most of them, they've been able to, down the road, just find a way to get a pay cut. And the guy comes back, plays on his final year, and instead of cutting and getting no production, they've gotten a pay cut. Tracy, for example, though, he's going to probably start somewhere. So they decided to part ways. That made sense. But it's really about re-signing players. I, I don't think Brad Holmes is going to get super crazy outside of who he is, which is he's going to re-sign a lot of his guys. First draft class is up this year. We're going to see a lot of extensions rolling in. Golf extension is the other thing. Keep an eye on that. That's the biggest domino. I think it's going to fall. I think he's going to be brought back. And uh, then, you know, some little moves. But that's the reason for optimism as a Lions fan is there's just not a ton of those. I just I compare it to the first year seeing this regime step in. You're like, Bro, there's like five dudes that we should cut like right now. And it's like, oh, this money we can save. But there's such a big downside of that too, especially when you give out those deals because you already know how much dead caps come with it. We were leading the league at one point. And the Lions right now, pretty much all their dead cap is the Tracy Walker cut. Outside of that, there's not a lot of clear cuts. So it sets the Lions up really well, man. They're, they're, it's, it's through the draft, the way that they built. Well, it's very interesting to hear that all four teams aren't in trouble, really. They have a lot of flexibility. I guess the worst off team is Green Bay, but they still have a lot of moves to be made to um, manipulate that and get it where it needs to be. So it should be a very interesting offseason and a very active one in the NFC North. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the NFC North Roundtable. Until next time, see you soon. Peace. We're out.